right so we will start uh, a new kind of programming paradigm called logic programming with this i mean this is new for you because you have not yet studied uh, any other programming paradigm except perhaps just the procedural paradigm so logic program these logic programming languages are called declarative programming languages versus procedural programming languages like c c++ etc these are declarative because you just have to specify in a declarative form what you want to do without actually specifying how the program should execute you are not specifying how the program should execute you don't have things like if then else for which specify the control flow control flow is pre specified you only declare what you want to do right so this is called a declarative programming style so we start by looking at some basics firstly we have the notion of instantiation which is similar to first order logic so you can have predicates like likes harry school which is a fact because harry and school are given constants likes ron broom and then you can have rules of this form where you have likes harry x if likes ron x so here in prolog this is a sub goal and in order to satisfy this sub goal you have to satisfy these right in other words the implication is from the right hand side to the left hand side so it says likes ron x implies likes harry x so if you have to deduce what harry likes then to use this rule you have to first deduce what ron likes right and we can have many other predicates on the right hand side so you can have likes ron x comma eats x something right we'll see more example now let us see that what is the notion of instantiation here we can instantiate the left hand side the rule head with this predicate right so you can have likes harry school and you can have then likes ron school no is the other way now right so from this you should be able to deduce that likes harry broom why because this is going to instantiate with this right broom with x and therefore we will have likes harry broom hmm. now let us consider some goals and see whether we can derive that can we deduce likes harry broom yes how do we do this let us see how prolog will do this it will start with likes it will start with the goal so this is backward chaining it it is always going to do backward chaining so it will start with likes harry broom this is how we specify a goal with a question mark followed by a dash then it will try to see what are the rule heads with this which will uh, unify with this so if you look at the uh, the rule likes harry x likes ron x okay so this unifies with the rule head with x substituted by broom so now the sub goal becomes likes ron broom after applying this rule the sub goal becomes this because we have unified with this and we know that in order to get this we have to get this so the sub problem is now of finding whether likes ron broom is supported by the knowledge base 
and in, it is in, in it is indeed supported because we have a fact here which says likes Ron Broom. Slides please. Slides please. Yes, we have likes Ron Broom as one clause. So therefore, we have been able to satisfy the sub goal and therefore, we can conclude that likes Harry Broom is indeed correct. What happens if we give the goal likes Harry Y? Here we have left a variable in the query. So what prologue is going to do is it will find out all possible instantiations of Y which satisfies Harry Y, satisfies likes Harry Y. Mm. So what is it going to do? It is again going to start by the instantiation on likes Harry Y, right? And then it is going to unify this with these clauses one at a time. So it will first pick up the clause likes Harry school. This clause is there in the knowledge base. So it will unify y with school and print out as the first result it will print out school. It will print out y equal to school and then it will not stop there. It, will, it is also going to try out the other rules that exist in the knowledge base. So it will try the next one. The next one is likes Harry X likes Ron X and it will unify with this create the sub goal likes Ron X and finally solve this by likes Ron Broom. And therefore, the second thing that it will print is y equal to broom, right. So this is going to be the output if you pro give this as the goal, right. Now see this, this, it is important to note that slides please, slides please. It is important to note that these clauses will be attempted in this particular order. So when you ask likes Harry Y, it is first going to try this clause, then this, then this. So if you have a recursion, then the base condition always has to be specified higher up in the order, so that it first tries the base condition, then tries the recursion. We will see lot of examples of that. If you write it in the oppos opposite way, it will say for example, if we put this clause, this likes Harry X, uh, if likes Ron X, if we put it ahead of these two, right, then it is going to first try this one, okay. And here we do not have a recursion because we have Harry here and we have Ron here, so it is not going to go in into an infinite loop. Huh. But we will see cases where the order is uh, is going to determine whether you are able to terminate or not. And prologue is not going to reorder the clauses to ensure termination. It is just going to execute in that order, right. Let us look at a third goal. Suppose we ask likes Z school. So it is going to try instantiating this with the first clause, then Z will be replaced by Harry and it will uh, output Z equal to Harry, right. Then it is going to try this, well broom does not unify with school, so it will leave that. Then it will try this and then it will find that there is a substitution X with school and Z with Harry 
So, it is going to look for likes Harry school and then this side will become likes Ron school. So, likes Ron school will become the sub goal, but then likes Ron school will not unify with this, it will not unify with this, it will not unify with this also and therefore, we will deduce that likes Ron school is not correct. Right. Now, note that because we are dealing with horn logic, we are always guaranteed to find both directions, the yes answer as well as the no answer. So, in this case it finds out that likes drawn school is negative. Right. So, the only thing that it is going to output here is z equal to Harry. Clear? No, I did not get your question. Like uh, here we found uh, school means like strong school mm -hmm. uh, as a sub goal, mm -hmm. and we might have uh, some clause re related to this below this clause. So should it be before this? Means no. finding before finding sub goal should we have like we had information like uh, Harry like Harry school and yes yes. So if there is something, see it is here is where as a programmer your choice lies. If you want prolog to first check out those clauses, you put them ahead of this clause. Right. We will see more examples to see I mean where we should put the ground clauses. If we put them below the rules, then it is first going to check the rules and then go to the facts. So, usually we will put all the facts first. So, that prologue tries the facts first. It first checks whether it is already there in the knowledge set and then it is going to try to use the rules to deduce sub goals. Hmm. We will go through several other examples. So, at the end of it. Now, suppose we ask likes z y. Hmm. Then we are going to have what is it going to do? It is first going to unify with this. So, it will say z equal to Harry, y equal to school. So, it is going to print pairs z equal to Harry, y is equal to school. Then it will print z equal to Ron, y equal to Broom. Right? Then it will come here unify z with Harry and x with y. Right? And therefore, here also we will have the sub goal likes run y and when we have the sub goal likes run y, then we will instantiate with this. So, y will be instantiated to broom. So, we will have z equal to Harry y equal to broom. Okay. So, this is going to print three things z equal to Harry y equal to school, z equal to run y equal to broom and z equal to Harry y equal to broom. Okay. Hmm. Yes or no? Let us look at another example. Now, we are trying to see how to model different kind of relations in prologue. So, Suppose we want to say that y is an offspring of x, right? then that is the same as saying that x is the parent of y. Hmm. These are just examples. All of these are there in, in the website, so you need not take, take them down. They are, these are all there. Just sit back and see. Mother x y is indicates that x is the mother of y. So, we can write that as parent x is a parent of y and x is female. Right. Grandparent, parent's parent, right. So, parent x y and parent y z. Right. So, if x is a parent of z, then 
this can be satisfied provided that we have a y such that x is a parent of y and y is a parent of z, then x is a grandparent of z. So, see on this side we can have many clauses on the right side. If these clauses are true, if the and of these are true, then this is true. So, this is the horn logic that we were talking about. You have several clauses on the right hand side, several uh, predicates on the right hand side, their conjunction implies what you have on the left hand side. No, we do not specify any quantifier here, right. The, the notion is that you have in this case, right, you have for all x, for all y always outside. For all y is yes, any variable that you have, you assume that they are all universally quantified from outside. So, for all x, for all y, for all z, parent x y and parent y z implies grandparent x z. Okay. So, that, that is as we were doing, you know, this is already in clause form, this is already in clause form in the sense that we have, we are writing it in the implicational form, but if you write it in not A or B style, then you will see that it is already there in that form, right. So, so, that for all is always there, we are not writing it out. Then you have sister x y, parent z x and parent z y and female x and different x y. Different x y is important because x and y can get instantiated to the same constant. So, it x and y both gets instantiated to Venus and we have Venus is the sister of Venus, whereas we want Venus and Serena, right. This is clear? Predecessor x z, this is not complete, we have more of it. Predecessor will use will have to use recursion, right. So, predecessor let us look at the rule first, uh, the second one. Predecessor x z means that parent x is the parent of y and y is a predecessor of z, right. So, this is a recursion and the basis of the recursion or the base condition is that parent that it is if x is a parent of z then x is also a predecessor of z if x is a parent of z then x is a predecessor of z otherwise if x is a parent of y and y is a predecessor of z then also x is a predecessor of z and we have to specify this in this order if you specify it in the opposite order if you specify this rule after this rule then prologue will always try to do this and you will never terminate if you want to check the predecessor of a and b if you want to check predecessor a b then you won't terminate right is it clear we, you will write this has two different rules the first rule will be for all x z, for all x for all z, parent x z implies predecessor x z. The second one will be written as for all of x, for all y, for all z, parent x y and predecessor y z implies predecessor x z. They have the same meaning. Hmm. But because in first order logic, you are doing going to do a search, right? You are not going to do just backward chaining. You are going to use full fledged search, right? So therefore, the ordering of the clauses is not important. But prologue, 
is a when well defined it has a programming semantics right so it is going to always try this one first and the next one after that it's going to always try in this order right it is never going to uh, try something different it's not going to at some point of time if it feels that it's in a uh, infinite loop let me try the other one first it's not going to do that right so we have to understand that semantics of prolog and write the clauses in that order is it clear Which one? Huh, if you want it that way, then you have to write it again in the other direction also. Right. So here we are writing that. Uh, okay. So what you want to say is mother x y is parent x y and female x, and you want to say that this is the only way that mother x y can be had, right? Because you are not specifying any other rule, it is automatically implied. See, there is no other way that you can get mother x y except by satisfying these two sub goals. Right. So, the only part is there because there is no other choice. On the other hand, here you have two choices. If it can be a direct parent or it can be parents parent or parents parents parent. So, these two rules actually gives you more choice. Here you have only one choice. So, it is if and only. That is what you are saying, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, that is automatic because if it is not only if, then you will have other rules. If you do not have other rules, it means it is only. Hmm. Because if you if there is no other rule, then there is no other way that you can derive that with the prologue engine. Hmm. Okay, let us we will look at a slightly more complicated example. Here I am, I will try to show you how to use prolog to encode a search procedure, hmm. a search procedure like the kind of procedure that we uh, used for the um, missionaries and cannibals, right. That was essentially a way to plan <coughs> the transport of the missionaries and cannibals to the other side right and we frame that as a search problem where we define the state as the number of missionaries number of cannibals and the position of the boat right so we are going to see how we can encode such a state space within the prolog framework right then we will go into other language features of prolog i'm just initially going to give you a glimpse of what we can do with prolog. Hmm. So, the monkey and banana example, uh, this I, uh, this is from the book of Russell and Norvig, this goes as follows. There is a monkey at the door of a room. In the middle of the room, a banana hangs from the ceiling. The monkey wants it, but it cannot jump high enough from the floor. Recall that the banana is in the middle of the room and the monkey is currently at the door of that room. Also at the window of the room, there is a box that the monkey can use. It is actually besides the window and the monkey can push the box to the middle of the room, then climb on the box and then it will be able to get hold of the banana. Hmm. The monkey can perform the following actions. It can walk on the floor, it can climb the box, it can push, push the box around if it is besides the box and it can grasp the banana if it is standing on the box directly under the banana. We will define the state, state of what? State of the affairs with a fourth tuple which gives us monkey at which is the position of the monkey, right? whether it is on floor or on box, then the position of the box 
and whether the monkey has been able to, whether it has the banana or not, right. This is the state. Hmm. Now, like in first order logic, we will, we are allowed to have functions in prologue. So, let us look at the first predicate. The predicate move has three arguments. The predicate move has three arguments. The first argument is the current state. The second argument is an action and the third argument is the final state. So, all the state transitions will be encoded in terms of the move predicate, right. So, all valid transitions, trans action transition pair will be encoded inside the move predicate. So, let us see that if we are in a state where the monkey is in the middle of the room the monkey is on the box, the box is also in the middle of the room and the monkey does not have the banana, then if it uses the grasp action, then the state will be middle, on box, middle and has. So, it will be able to grasp the banana, right. Now, we put this clause at the top because we always want prologue to first check whether we can satisfy this. And if you see that this is the penultimate position of the monkey, it is at the middle, on box, box is in the middle and it does not have the banana. So, this is the last step. So, we put it at the first, so that we can always check whether this last step can be applied hmm, at every point of time. The second rule, the second rule says that if we are in, if the monkey is in a position P, it is on the floor, the box is also in P, right, and has or has not whatever, this is a variable, so whatever, then by climbing the state will become P, this on floor will become on box and the box will also remain in P and has or has not state will remain similar, right. Third rule says, if we are in P 1 and the monkey is on the floor, box is in P 1, then by pushing from P 1 to P 2, the state becomes P 2 on floor, box is also in P 2 and h, right. Hmm? Fourth rule, if it, if the monkey is in P 1, right, it is on the floor, box can be anywhere and has or has not, then if it walks from P 1 to P 2, then the state becomes that the position P 1 changes to P 2 and the position of the box remains the same because it has just walked, it has not pushed, right. So, these are the set of <coughs> rules that we have to depict the moves that uh, the monkey can make, okay, hmm? right. Next, we have this predicate can get, right. So, let us see the can get tells us that whether we can get the banana starting from state 1. Hmm? So, we can get it starting from state 1 if there is a move which takes us from state 1 to state 2 with a move and then can get state 2 is correct, right. Now, this move is a variable, mind you, 
this is a this move is a variable if there is a change of state from state 1 to state 2 and can get state 2 then we are done and the ground condition is that whatever you have here if you have has here then your can get is true regardless of where you are if you have been able to get the banana if you, if the banana state is has then we have can get right finally the goal the goal says that can get from the state at door monkeys at the door it is on the floor box is at window and has not now try to see what happens if we run this prolog program if we ru run this prolog program with this as the goal what is going to happen the first thing that it is going to try is it will try matching with this rule the first one see it is going to try to match this goal with the rule head so it will try with this can get then it will see that it does not unify because we have has here and we have has not here so it is going to unify this state with state 1 right and so we will have here move state at door on floor at window has not some moves to state 2 and can get state 2 so this will be our two sub goals then once it has this move the fir the first state is at door on floor at window has not it is going to try to unify that with these move predicates right so it is not going to unify with this because middle is not going to unify with at door right it is not going to unify with this because this p and this p has to be identical whereas in our current state this is at door and this is at window so it will not unify with this rule head either similarly it is not going to unify with this because this also requires p1 and p1 but it will unify with this so we will have at door here at window here and h here right then it can walk from p1 to p2 right p2 is still not instantiated and state p2 on floor bh now what prolog is going to do is it is going to try to instantiate p2 with all possible things one by one right so it will keep this variable p2 fluid for the time being and later on when it again tries to unify this with another state it will unify with with at window and that is going to cause the monkey to walk from at door to at window see that is the first step then similarly by the similar reasoning you will see that it will eventually move push the box from window to middle then it will be able to apply this rule and it will be able to climb the box and then finally it will be able to apply this and it this final state is going to become has when that becomes has oops yes when that becomes has then this can get with the state 2 is going to unify with this has and that is where we will terminate right we have some prolog uh, interpreters in in our laboratory hmm. please check out uh, with the lab staff i will inform them uh, and try your hand at some prolog programs because if we are to uh, you can try in using that minesweeper problem that I assignment that I have given you. Hmm. So, one option to do that is to use prologue 
to do the deduction for you if you are able to write down the rules properly. Hmm. So, please take a look at the prologue interpreter. Linux also comes with some uh, prologue uh, in its distribution. So, you can if you have PCs in your rooms, then you can try out prologue there as well. Okay. Uh, let us continue on this. So, we will now look at some more features of uh, prologue. Now, prologue does not have data structures. It does not have any kinds of data structures like heap tree etcetera and that is actually a drawback. So, there have been developments to incorporate procedural predicates within prologue, so that you are able to write data structures in the procedural form right like and just have predicates like insert, delete etcetera, which is going to work on those data structures. The basic data structure which has which prologue supports is lists, it just has lists and it can be lists of anything, symbolic lists. Okay. This can be written as follows, you can write lists as item 1, comma item 2 and so on, you have to enclose that within third brackets. You can have lists like head, then uh, mid and tail right. Now, this means that this head is the first item of the list and the remaining list is the tail. Okay. You can also write it in this head tail form where head consists of several items right followed by the tail which is the other item. Okay. For example, these lists are all equivalent for prologue a b c or you can write a as the head and b c as the remaining list. See what you have after the bar is another list. So, that is why you see we are enclosing that again in another pair of third brackets. So, this list in the head tail form the first is an item and the, the, the second is the remaining list. So, you can have a comma b and then again c is another list and then you can have a b c and the empty list at the end. These are all identical in prologue. Items can be lists as well. So, for example, see here, here this list has three items. The first item is the list a b the second item is C and the third item is a list which again has D as the first item and the list E f as the second item. Okay. No, this is not the same as A B C D E F. Right. This is a list of three items first item is a list, second item is C, the third item is another list. Okay. The head of the of this list is the list A B, because I have this list as the head, right. Here the head was a collection of two items A comma B, here it is a list it is a single item. The head? Yes, it is always the head is always the first item of the list. Regardless of anything, head is the first item of the list. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yes, but this this list of a comma b is the head. No, here a comma b is the head. A comma b is the head. That list is the head. Uh, 
Which one? This this one is the same. Yes. So head will be the A only. A only. No no no. This this whole thing. Two different. So head depends upon the separation. Okay, just just so repeating. No, if already. you if you do not put uh, a third bracket here, then head is A, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. If you put a third bracket here, then the whole list is the head. Yes. So here head is A. Here also head is A. Here also head is A. Here head is the list A B. Right? I got a little bit confused there. Now is there is that all right? Huh? This slash, huh? this is this tells us these are items and this is the remaining list, right. Now, what we can have here is we can have a variable uh, which will instantiate with this list. As we go further, you will see why, why we require that slash. Huh? This is fine. Uh, more than one means you can have that nested within others like you can have this as d no, no 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 not more than one no if you have uh, before slash if you have an element of means a list it will be an element. The list will be an element. After that, whatever we have, it will be a part of the list. After slash, after slash, after slash you only have a list. Yes. Whatever you have after the slash is a list. Huh. Whatever you have before the slash can be a single item like head or it can be a collection of items. So, that means there is hmm. a, a, b and then slash and then list c is there. Hmm. No, that is going to be different because then the head is going to be the list a comma b, whereas in this case the list is the head is only a. Is that right? Hmm? Now let us see the usage of list. Suppose we want to deduce the membership of x in a list. So this is how we will write it. The member predicate, where member x y, x is an item, y is a list and member x y will be true if x is an item belonging to the list y. Mm. So, so, here member x uh, yes, uh, actually I should have used the mid here, I should have used the dash here, I thought I used the dash here, I do not know how it has become a comma here. Uh, anyway, just read this as, let me write it down here. So, we are trying to write the predicate member x y where x is an member of list y. Hmm. So, if we find that this is the ground condition where x matches with the first element of y. So, if we have member x and then if it is the first element then that is the end. Otherwise, what we need to do is x and then we have head 
tail this is member if this does not unify with this if this unifies with this then we are this will apply if this because prologue is going to try in this order so we will come to this rule only when this head of the list head of y does not match with x tail is a list no, tail is after the uh, mid what you have is the tail it is always a list so then we just need to check whether x is a member of tail Now, here we have just checked whether x is a member of the list y. Huh. Now, it is possible that x is not a member of list y, but x is a member, x belongs to some sublist of y, because suppose we have y, suppose x is a and y is the list uh, right now when we apply this what is going to happen in the first b will not unify with a this list will not unify with A. So, we will try to check whether A is a member of this of the tail, right. But then A will not unify with this list, right. So, again this will also not match. The problem is that we are just looking at the list at one level of depth, right. So, if that does not unify with the head, we are just going to the next item. But even if it does not unify with head, it can unify with some sub item of head, right. So, take that down as an exercise to find out the membership within sub lists of y. So, member x y will be true if x is a member of some sub list of y. So, which means that you have to recursively go down into the lists, into the nestings of the lists. Previous slide. Yes. So, even in this list if you are looking for item A with the membership function that we just now wrote, the membership predicate we wrote just now, we are not going to find it. Sir, is membership not something already defined? No, no, we are writing this. I am just showing you some glimpses of predicates that we can write. There is nothing which is predefined. We have to write everything. This having a single element? It is different than the entire element. Yes, yes. yes. A singular list, I mean, uh, uh, for example, here when we wrote down, yes, yes. I mean, B within third brackets and B without third brackets are not the same thing. Right. So, this is the membership function where we just look at the uh, first level of the list, not within the sub list. Hmm. Concatenation. Concatenation, where concatenation uh, predicate is going to be like this that concatenate conc. A 
L 1, L 2, L 3. Right? So, concatenate L 1 with L 2 to get L 3. Now, in, in, in prologue, that there, there is an equivalence between two things. One is that concatenate, you may look at it in a procedural way, concatenate L 1 and L 2 to get L 3 or you can think of that given L 1, L 2, L 3 as three different list variables, three different variables. This is true if L 3 is the concatenation of L 1 and L 2. So, remember that it is a predicate, it has a true false value. Right. So, if you concatenate the empty list, slides please, if you concatenate the em empty list with L, we get L. Right. So, if we have this empty and this L and this L, then that is always true. Otherwise, if the first argument is x and then L 1, second argument is L 2 and third argument, argument is x followed by L 3, then this is true provided that L 1 and L 2 concatenated gives us L 3. Right. Now, see you have to understand one thing, if you give three lists and if your, if your query is given three lists to deduce this thing, suppose I give a query which says that conk A, B, A, B. Then what is prologue going to return? It is going to return true. Right. If you give conk A, Z, A, B, what is prologue going to return? it will return z equal to b. Right. And if you give conk a b z, then it is going to return z equal to a b. Right. So, this program that we have written here is actually going to do all of these things. It is just a declarative way of describing in using a recursion that what we mean by concatenation in first order logic. Right. So, in we will conclude this lecture now. In the next class, we will see some more examples on prologue and then I, I think I will give you some exercises to work on an actual prologue engine yeah, to get a feel of what logic programming is like. So, we will continue our study of the prologue programming language. In the last class, we had introduced the basics of the language. To give you a brief recap, we can have in prologue facts, ground facts specified as predicates like this and also we can have rules like uh, this like sari x if likes ron x and then we can deduce goals like uh, like Sari Broom, which is a ground goal, ground predicate and we just have to find out whether this is correct or not. So, we have to find out whether like Sari Broom can be inferred from the set of facts and the given set of rules. We can also give queries which involve a variable in which case Prolog will find out all instantiations of the variable which satisfy the predicate. Right. So, for example, here it will find out all instantiations of y which satisfies likes Harry y. So, 
for example, Y will be instantiated to broom as well as school in this program. And then we had also seen that you can actually give a goal where all the arguments are variables in which case it will find out all ways of satisfying that predicate. Let us look at uh, recap what we had studied on lists. We had seen that lists can be written in several ways in prologue and lists are in fact the only kind of data structure if we, if we may call it that, that prologue supports. So the lists are of the following types. You can have item 1, item 2, etc., or you can have head followed by tail. You can have item 1, item 2 and then a list. So whatever comes after this bar is another list which is the rest of the original list. And then we had seen that items in the list can in turn be lists themselves. Right. Okay. So what is happening? If you take L1, L1 is a permutation of this remaining list. Right. And then we can insert X at any point in L1 and then we will get P. Right. Okay. Right. Now let us see with again with an example that how does it uh, work out this thing. So suppose I will shortly define it. Insert is easy. Insert means that basically uh, that X has to be a member of um, P and the remaining elements is going to be identical to L1. So in other words, if you, if you delete X from P, you should get X1, L1. If you delete X from P, you should get L1, right. Anyway. So let us say that we are looking for the sub the goal where we are looking for permutation say So if you look at the second rule here, then it is it is not going to match with the first rule because the lists are not empty. It is going to try with the second rule where it is going to instantiate X with A, right. 